Okay, so we've built these beautiful responsive designs. We even added some customizations to the Tailwind config file to make it unique. Let's now look at the steps to make it ready for production and optimize the CSS bundle generated. So in this project, we've extended our theme with a few extra colors. We created a little brand color palette, which has three colors, brand light, brand, and brand dark. Just adding these three colors generated a lot of utility classes for us, probably more than you think. If I go in any class name attribute in our markup and I type the word brand, you can see that utilities were generated for gradients, background colors, ring colors, text colors, divide colors, border colors, placeholder colors, ring offset colors, and so on. Then consider that all these utility classes also have responsive variants generated for each of our breakpoints. So that's another one, two, three, four, five lots of all these colors utilities you've just seen. Then think about other variants like hover or focus, active. That's another few lots of color utilities for you. What about combined variants like maybe hover on the medium breakpoint or focus on the extra large breakpoints? I think you get the idea. So let's actually dive in the CSS generated by Tailwind and let's search for the word brand. And wow, if you can see next to the search bar, we have 684 instances of the word brand in our file. We have divide brand for the light brand and dark colors, background colors, group hover colors, focus within colors, hover colors, from, via, to, gradients, border, placeholder, and you get the idea. The list goes on and on. Now, I'm pretty sure we don't need or want the vast majority of these brand utility classes. All we wanted was a text color for our headline, a background color for our button with variants for hover and active, and a couple of text colors for our card links here. Now, all this was generated with only three colors. Now, take a second to think about the fact that the same process is going to happen with all the Tailwind default colors. The red color palette is going to do the same for 10 colors, 10 for yellow, 10 for green, 10 for blue, indigo, purple, and pink. Then think about the same process applied to our spacing scale. These will generate utilities for things like margin, margin top, margin right, margin horizontal, margin vertical, the same for padding, the same for width, for height, and the list goes on. When you think about all that, it becomes quite obvious that Tailwinds generate thousands and thousands of utility classes. Matter of fact, let's actually take a look at the specs of the generated CSS file. So let's take a look, drum rolls, and boom. You can see that Tailwind generated a whopping 3.89 meg CSS file. That's an enormous amount of CSS and you most likely don't want this in your production bundle. That said, you can see that the gzip version of the same file is much smaller, more than 10 times smaller at 316 kilobytes. That's already much better, but it's still way too much CSS for the small project that we've built. So let's just be clear here, this is the worst possible case scenario. Starting from here, let's see how we can improve the situation. So let's start generating a production build, which is going to do things like minify the CSS, remove comments. In my package.json file, I'll go down to the scripts and we'll add a new script called build. And this one will run the command vit build. So we can let vit run a build production for us. Okay, so now let's try to run that build script. npm run build. So you can see we're getting a warning about Tailwind not purging unused styles, and we'll talk about this in a second. But for now, let's look at our results. So our CSS file is down here, and you can see that it's still 3.2 meg, which is huge. The compression with Bertley though is pretty impressive with 74 kilobytes. So that's a small improvement on our worst case scenario, but we can do much, much better than this. So you can see in our config file that we have a purge key up here. And we got these warnings about Tailwind not purging unused styles because no template path was provided. And what this all refers to is a tool called Purge CSS. So Purge CSS is a tool that's going to remove your unused CSS. It's going to take a look at your content and your CSS files to figure out which classes you've actually used in your project. And well, it's going to get rid of everything else. Perch CSS is such a useful tool that we've integrated its configuration right inside Tailwind. Let's take a look at how to use it and how it works. So here in our config file, we have a purge key and it's set to an empty array by default. We are being warned that Tailwind is not purging because no template paths have been provided. 
So the most basic way to get Purge working in Tailwind is to specify inside of this array where to find our content files which contains our markup that consume these CSS classes so Purge can go and scan it. In our case, some of our markup lives in src and then app.jsx. So let's add this path here, src slash app.jsx. But we're also consuming some classes in components destination card. So we could also add slash src slash components slash destination card.jsx. But we probably don't want to add each file individually like this. So we could instead use a glob and say, look into src slash any subdirectory and then any file that ends in JSX. So now it's going to look into the src folder and any file that ends with JSX, so main JSX, app JSX, and destination card JSX will be considered and scanned by purge. Okay, so let's clear up our terminal and try run the build command once again. npm run build. And the results are pretty drastic. If we look at our CSS file, we now have only 8.65 kilobytes of CSS and gzipped, we have barely more than two kilobytes of CSS. That almost sounds too good to be true, right? So let's actually check that our production site still looks good. Our production build has been generated in this dist folder. So let's take a look at this. So I've got this dist folder running in a little live server here and everything looks pretty good. We have our button, the hover states, the active states, everything works well. There's just one little detail here. We had a very subtle off-white background here for this section so that the white background of the cards would pop out a little bit more. Now this background section here is completely white. Anyone able to guess what's happening here? So our project was built in this app.jsx file. But if you remember, our app component is injected in our HTML file in a place where there's an element with the ID of root. This happened in the index.html file, which is outside of the source folder. And here's where the app is being injected. Now, if you look at the line just above, you can see that we're using a class BG Gray 200. This is exactly the class that's missing in our production bundle. We've used this class in our project, but we haven't specified the file path in our purge configuration, so it hasn't been scanned. So here, let's go and add our index.html template. And let's rerun the build script, npm run build. And if we look back at our production build in the browser, you can see that now we have this BG gray 200 background color. Nice. Let's go in our dist folder and look in assets at the CSS file, which you can see is minified and fairly short. And we'll search for BG gray 200. And yep, the class is in there. If I go in my app component and look for a slightly more complex class, like this Excel text for Excel class, let's see if we can find this one. So I'll search for XL and I need to escape my column and then text for Excel. And you can see it right here. Notice that we do not have classes like Excel text 5 XL or Excel text 2 XL next to it because we've only used text for Excel for the Excel breakpoint. So there you go, incredible gains for very little effort here. But it's important that you understand how Purge CSS works and what it's looking for when scanning files. By design, Purge CSS takes a very naive approach to scanning file, and it's going to strictly look for text strings. It needs to find the entire string of a class to keep it. So let me show you what I mean. If I go in the destination card component here, you can see that for the image, we're applying height and width utilities. So let's say we wanted to make this height and width dynamic, uh, maybe something like reacting to a prop passed to the component. So imagine we'd have a const size equals, and we'll set to 32. And then we'd want to pass these size values to our utilities. So I'll turn this to a template literal. And then here, instead of having our 32 two times hard coded, we would use the size variable. So if we look at our dev preview, you can see that it still works and we could change the size so let's set that to 40. And you can see now the card's bigger because they have the H40 and W40 classes applied. So let's go back to 32 and we'll try a production build one more time. NPM build. And if we look at the production build now, you can see the card look quite different. It actually looks pretty cool, very Instagram-like, but this is not what we were going for. In our production CSS, if I look for H32, you can see that it doesn't find the class. 
Same with W32. These classes have been removed and so the image is taking the entire width of each grid cell. So what happens here is Perch CSS sees the number 32 and it sees the H dash and W dash strings, but there's nowhere in this file where it can find the entire text string for the class H32 and W32. Perch CSS is not going to execute code and try to see what this evaluates to, so it'll never find the H32 class, the W32 class, and therefore drop them from the production CSS bundle. To show you that Perch is really just looking for classes as text strings, I'll leave this component like this, and I'll go in my index.html file, which is specified in the files to scan by Perch, and just before our root element here where all the app is generated, I'll add a paragraph tag and I will literally have the text h32, w32. I'll save this and one more time run the production build. And now looking at our production website again, you can see our paragraph up there with the height and width classes as plain text. And the destination cards look great once again. So it looks like our height and width 32 classes are back in our production CSS. So let's search for them, h32. And yep, here it is, w32 as well. All right, so remember, Perch CSS will look for text strings and nothing else. So if you wanted to do something dynamic like here, you might need to do that in a different way and do something that allows Perch to see the entire class name string. So instead of size, maybe you could have size classes, which is an object, and then you would have height, and here the entire class, so h32, and then width, w32. And then down there, instead of h dash size, you would use size classes dot height, and instead of that, size classes dot width. So you'd still be able to change the size of the image dynamically. For example, let's change both values to 40 here, and that would still work. But now because these two classes are present here in this file with the whole string, and let's remove this from our HTML so we're not cheating here, and let's build one more time. So our classes are removed from the paragraph up here because I've removed it, but the cards still look good and the H32 and W32 classes are present. They haven't been purged away because Perch CSS was able to find the full class string in the template. All right, a couple of more things I want to show you before we wrap up. The first thing is when Tailwind actually decides to run Perch CSS. By default, Tailwind is going to look for the value of the node env environment variable and only run Perch if this is set to production. It's been working for us here in the build script because under the hood, Vite's build sets the node env environment variable to production. But if it wasn't the case, or if you're using some other tool, you could do it yourself by starting the script with node env in uppercase equals production. So that's the default behavior to determine when purge should be run, but I'll show you how you can take control of that. So here we're just passing an array to purge to determine which files to scan. But if you need more control over your purge configuration, you can also define your purge key here as an object. So let's do that. And when you do this, the array of path to scan should be placed in the content property. So that's going to work exactly the same, but now you can add more options to this subject. One of them is the enabled property, and this will let you override the decision-making process of when to run purge. So for example, if I set it to false, now purge will basically never be enabled and therefore never run. So if I build once again, we should now go back to our giant file size because we haven't purged anything. And yep, there it is, back to three plus megs of CSS. If I set it to true, it will always run, even in development mode. So every time you rebuild your CSS, it's gonna go through purge, which might slow down your process a little bit. And you can use any other logic that you'd want in here. So I'll comment that out now. And there's a few other options available that you can find in the Tailwind documentation. One of them being an options object, which is an escape hatch that will let you pass options directly to purge CSS. And if you go to the Perch CSS docs website, you'll find information about this options object that you can pass. So any of these values you can pass directly to Perch CSS. For example, safe list, which lets you define a list of classes that you want to never purge away, even if Perch CSS cannot find them in any of the templates. So that's it. As you can see, Perch CSS is an incredible tool and is super easy to configure in your Tailwind config. By simply specifying a list of files to scan, we were able to go from 3.2 megabytes of CSS 
down to only 8.75 kilobytes and a tiny 2.2 kilobytes of CSS gzipped. Despite generating thousands of utility classes that enable us to prototype in the browser really rapidly, we know that we'll end up with an incredibly small bundle in production and with very little setup efforts on our ends. 